Hello everyone. Today I've got not one, not two, but three amazing indie horror books that I think you should read. These ones are all fantastic. Uh, one of them's a little bloody, one is more psychological. Uh, well, actually two of them are really, really bloody. And uh, there's a variety in there for you to choose and pick from. Uh, and before we get started, I want to remind you that I have books for sale. And if you want to read any of my books, you see them there on the screen. You can check out the link in the description. And if you want to buy me a coffee at ko-fi.com, that link is also in the description. It's not necessary, but if you want to, I appreciate it. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first book I want to talk about today is called Raven's Creek by David Jack Fletcher. If you've ever thought to yourself, you know what the horror world needs? A story about a mad scientist. Well, this book has you covered. But unlike those movies of old where the mad scientist is hidden in his basement with a, with a hair sticking up and a, a screaming into the night, this one is set more in modern times. This is about uh, science going very, very wrong when it comes to things like DNA, genetics, and cell manipulation. Uh, there's a couple, and uh, this couple, Jeff and Michael, they want to have a baby, and so they choose a surrogate, her name is Rose, to have the baby for them. And for some reason, Rose absconds with the baby before it's born, and they go chasing after her. Now, we don't know why at first this happened, but we will get there. That's one of the great things about this book, that little, that little secret about why did Rose leave in the first place. We're going to find all that out. But they go after her, and they locate her in a town called Raven's Creek, a very dilapidated town. Uh, this thing is like a ghost town, but there is a motel that seems to be open, and they decide to spend the night there. And that is a mistake because this motel is a front for uh, an underground secret uh, lab and uh, other things <laughs> down there. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain because I don't want to give anything away. Uh, but yeah, the, the motel is just a front. And once you check in, you do not check out. Kind of like a cockroach hotel uh, from the old TV commercials there. And they're going to find themselves in a very horrifying situation. This this book is like the island of Dr. Moreau on crack. Uh, these, these scientists, these doctors, they started experimenting with human genetics and, and ways to cure diseases at first and regrow limbs and, and good things, things that would benefit humanity. But because it was such a fringe science at the time, they can never get funding. And so they went a little over the uh, d deep end there and they decided to experiment anyway, get their money from other sources, and you are going to read about all that, uh, but it's very brutal and very bloody. Some of these creatures are, uh, are some of the most horrendous things you will ever read about in a horror book. Uh, <clears throat> and these two men, while they're still searching for roles, while they're still searching for their baby, uh, they're gonna be put into a fight for their lives inside of this secret underground lair, I guess you could say, that these doctors, these scientists have uh, built for the purpose of experimenting on human beings, turning them into these hideous, horrifying, bloodthirsty, maniacal creatures. Uh, this is a great book, man. It is full of action. Some of the scenes in here are just Action, 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 bloody, 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 heads are going to roll, literally. Uh, bodies being chopped up and uh, all kinds of weapons are going to be used. Guns and knives, syringes, uh, everything you can imagine. Uh, but this one isn't just about the blood because there's also a really good story in there about this research they're doing. We're going to get the background on all these different characters, how this place came to be. We're going to find out what happened to Rose to make her run away in the first place. And uh, it, it's just a fantastic, fast-paced, action-filled, bloody horror story. And there is nothing wrong with that. That's exactly the kind of thing you need every once in a while. And I can highly recommend Raven's Creek uh, to you. There will be a link down below for all of these books in the description. Be sure to check this one out. And next we have It Doesn't Go Away by Wendy Dalrymple. 
This is a novella, so this one's not going to take you long to read. But this is a very disturbing, creepy, psychological horror story about a woman who loses her husband. Her husband dies. And again, we don't know why at first, but that will be explored later in the book. But under the circumstances, whatever happened, she is feeling the weight of, this, of his death. She's even feeling a little guilty. Uh, what kind of secrets is she hiding? Again, we'll, that will be explored. But she decides to through hike the Appalachian Trail as a way to uh, find herself again, to get over these feelings. Uh, she's, kind of, she's kind of hoping to punish herself just to feel something again. And what better way than to spend you know, three to six months outside doing nothing but hiking and sleeping in the woods, being very uncomfortable. Uh, you know, you got the blisters, you got the weight of your backpack, you very uncomfortable sleeping situations and all that good stuff. <clears throat> so she goes out to the Appalachian Trail uh, to try to find herself again and make sense of what has happened to her husband. But uh, from the very first night, strange, creepy things start happening. She sees things uh, out on that trail. And are they real? Does she really see those things? Or are they a product of her overburdened imagination? That's the, that's the mystery throughout this book, if she's actually seeing these things or not. Uh, she does meet some other people along the trail, but they don't see any the things that she sees. At one point, she's going to get lost in the woods, away from where she set up her camp, uh, and uh, things are going to get exponentially worse <laughs> for her from there. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to give too much weight because this is a novella and it won't take you long to read. But this author really knows how to build that tension, how to build that atmosphere of being on the Appalachian Trail and seeing all these really dis disturbing things. And then we're going to get to where we find out how her husband died, the circumstances under which he died, and some of the things she's been seeing will kind of make sense then, but we still don't know whether they're a product of her imagination or if these things are actually real and uh, followed, who followed her out there trying to find her and hunt her down. Uh, it's an excellent, excellent novella, and uh, I highly, highly recommend it. It'll give you the goosebumps. It's set on the Appalachian Trail, so it's kind of claustropho claustrophobic, you know. Uh, and it's just fantastic. Go ahead and pick that up at the link in the description. And the final book I want to talk about today, it came out in 2013, I think. But that's the great thing about books. They never really get old. If you're reading it for the first time, it's new to you. This one is called The Summer Is Ended and We Are Not Yet Saved by Joey Kamau. Uh, this is a slasher book, straight up slasher. It's set in a summer camp, a Christian summer camp. And it's run by a priest and uh, well, this priest is a psychopath. <laughs> and pretty soon he just starts going crazy. He is killing everything from, from the campers to the counselors in very bloody, brutal, violent manners. And uh, he is just going nuts there. There is a core group of, of campers that once they discover what's going on, and they realize that this priest has basically gone full on Michael Myers, psycho, <laughs> psychopath. Uh, they have to try to escape. But every time they try something, this plan seems to be thwarted. Because he is a man. I mean, no, nobody's going to believe these kids. Nobody believes that, that this priest, this man who runs this campground, he's done so for years, has gone on a killing spree and, hi and hiding body and body parts uh, on the property. They know it's true, but nobody else is going to believe them. And he comes off to other people as, well, you know, kids will make things up and maybe they just don't like my discipline, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and everybody believes them. But this is just a great, good old-fashioned slasher. Uh, set, set in a really great environment, you know, a summer camp. Run by a priest who's just a, a very much a, a, a psychopath. Uh, this was a fun read, uh, fun for me to read, not fun for the characters because very horrible things are going to happen to them. I'm, I'm guessing it's no fun to get your head chopped off, uh, you know, 
I don't know that from experience, obviously, but I'm, I'm assuming that's not a fun thing. <laughs> uh, but this is a great book. It's a fun slasher read. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're coming up on the end of summer here, and what better way to end it than with a, a book about some summer slashery, bloody fun, right? And this book has that and more. It has everything you need for that kind of vibe to finish out your summer. And I definitely recommend it. I really enjoyed reading this one. It's, it's a quick read. Uh, <clears throat> And it's not trying to tell you anything except this is a slasher story with the priest being the slasher at this camp. And it's fantastic. And uh, you can find the links for this one and all the previous books I talked about in the description. And I do recommend it. All right. So there's three indie horror books that I think you should read. You have all different kinds of varieties. I think you should pick them all up because they're all fantastic. They're there, there are things you want to read that you might not otherwise have heard, have heard of. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time and spending it here with me. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends. <laughs>